Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we've got a new tank. This is going to be the Congo Biotope tank or the subscriber tank. The style I'm going to go for is a river, but I'm going to go more hardscape than planted. This is a four foot tank from NACD. Um, I'll put a link in the description. It's not sponsored, it's not discounted, full retail price. Bought this tank, absolutely delighted with the quality of it. I've got lots of NACD aquariums, so I'm happy to recommend them. Uh, so it's four foot by 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. It's got sliding glass lids, nice uh, silicon job. <laughs> happy with the tank, it's absolutely perfect. If you don't know what I'm on about, on a Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time, I usually do a live stream. And we decided as a group with all the subscribers to choose a fish to base a tank around. Something that's a bit more interactive where we all get to input into it and we ended up going with Congo Tetras as being the focus fish for the tank and doing a biotope as the style of tank. So I've been out, I've bought this. I haven't been out, it got delivered. What I'm going to do today is start scaping it for the biotope. I'm going to try to be as true as I can to a Congo biotope. Um, I've been looking for pictures and to get inspiration of what the Congo looks like, but there's not all that many pictures of what the the uh, river basin looks like, uh, certainly not underwater ones, and the ones that they are, they're so vastly different because the Congo is such a big river. So I'm going to have a bash at my interpretation of a Congo biotope. We've already got the fish, we've got the plants, we've talked about them in previous uh, videos. I'm going to have my first attempt at that and then I invite you all to come and join me on a Friday night in my live stream and tell me what I've done wrong or make new suggestions of how we can improve it or new fish to add. But I'm going to try and create a riverscape as best I can using my normal style of aquascaping which is very much just chuck things in and move them around until I get something I'm reasonably happy with. I'm going to base the main chunk of the scape around a couple of big pieces of bogwood. So I've got some really nice interesting pieces of bogwood like this, some nice big stones. I'm going to crush up some other stones to make some smaller pebbles and things like that and just see if I can get a good enough scape that I'm happy with. We're not going to go over the top with plants on this one. I'm going to keep it quite lightly, sparsely planted. I'm going to keep it quite a flat with the slightest of banks towards the bank. Normally if I was doing a planted tank I'd try and get quite a dramatic slope which gives lots of different um, viewpoints and angles but this is it's meant to be a river. Rivers don't have all that much so I'm going to keep it reasonably flat but mostly the soil will be at the back and then put the sand on top of that so let's start with that. So what I'm essentially starting off with here is a dirty tank so I'm just using plain uh, cheap compost, no additives, no nothing in there and it's just to give me that base layer something that if I do want to use rooted plants in the future it's got something to go into underneath the sand that will just help me get that started off a little bit better. Um, I'm, the main reason I'm doing this as a dirty tank rather than using proper aquarium gravel uh, or aquarium planting substrate is cost. So I've basically blown the budget by buying the new tank for this so I'm trying to save money in other areas. As I'm not really using a heavily planted tank at the moment I don't think that's going to impact me too much if I do this so we'll get started with this. So the aim here is to get a good thick sand bed at least an inch, I think, and I want a good half inch topping, capping off the soil where I've put the soil. It's not getting away from it, it will mix eventually over time. I'm kind of fine with that because riverbeds are a bit like that, they're not pristine sand beds. I just don't want to dig it all up straight away, but the first thing that I do. It's got a very slight gradient up to the back, so I'm happy with that. Now, wood and rocks. So I've started with a selection of rocks. My, my method is very much, it's very arbitrary. I like to pick a couple of specimen pieces, a couple of main pieces, so I've got a couple of nice bits of wood that I know I like. I've got a couple of nice stones with some nice patterns. I wanted smoother stone, so I've not used any of the dragon stone or the Sirius stone that I've got. This feels more rivery to me to have the smoother stones. So I've got a couple of specimen stones, a couple of specimen wood. I'll start off by placing them and then just kind of moving things around until I get something that I like the feel of. I'm not an aquascaper by a long shot, so this isn't a how-to or a tutorial. This is just what I'm doing. If you want a tutorial, 
go and have a look at MD fish tanks or George Farmers. They're, they're the proper experts in this field. This is just me throwing things together and settling on something that I like, really. So I see how we get on. So I'm happy with the general placement of the wood and the rocks. So I've got a few big rocks and a couple of big pieces of wood and some smaller pieces interweaved. So it kind of looks like one big... I'm trying to create some flow going in that general direction so it looks like a river's maybe just at the end of a sweep and it's coming through. So I need some smaller rocks. So I've been outside with a lump hammer and smashed up some dragon rock. And that gives me this, which is a little bit sharper than the smoother stones for the river stone. And the thinking here is these are smaller ones that are getting carried down by the river and they're not yet eroded and worn away. But in reality, I've got more dragon stone and it's easier to smash up. Just basically scattering that around the edges of where, if this is a flow, where it might get snagged up. That's my general thinking. So I'm happy enough with that. Large rocks small broken rocks doesn't look quite natural enough so I've nicked some gravel from another tank which is the smaller rounded gravel there's a mix of rounded stuff and sharper stuff here so this will be the stuff that's mid erosion just think this makes it look more river beddy obviously if you go and have a look at images for the Congo you find everything because it's a massive river obviously it's not just one type of substrate that you find. There's a mix of all kinds of stuff. So I am taking some liberties here and calling this a biotope. Might be more accurate to call it a biotype, maybe. But we're trying to be reasonably accurate. Just helps break it up a little bit more and make it look a tiny bit more natural. And get a bit heavier around some areas where it might get snagged up. And then I'm taking a step back. Every time I do something, I'm taking a step back, just having a look and seeing, does it look stupid? Does it look good? Does it look somewhere in between? Like for instance, I've noticed this bit here now looks a bit bare because I was coming at it from a, a different angle. There's that looks better now. So I don't know if you can tell, but I've got quite tight tolerances here, so I've brought the whole tank out so I can get my arms in it to do this stage when I'm messing around. Next stage is I've got plants in this tank here. So we've got some Olbitus in here, and we've got some Crinum at the back, Anubius. We've also got some 53B here, but that's not going in here. It might later if I decide to make it a more planted tank. We're going to set it up as an African tank first and see how I enjoy keeping a, a biotope. But we've literally got three bunches of Bulbitis, three types of Anubius uh, and a Crinum. So they have to be quite sparsely placed. And I think that's more natural than making it a big jungle tank because it's just not like that. Riverbeds aren't like that. They're not even going to be like this, so I don't know why I'm saying it like that. But I think it's a little bit more natural. It's not just because I'm a cheapskate that we're skimping. I mean, there's still like 60 quid's worth of plants in there that are going in here. Um, but you could easily spend hundreds of pounds just to fill this out, but I think it will look more natural. But if it doesn't, come and join me on a Friday night and tell me, and we'll buy more plants, it's fine. But we'll start with this. I'm going to attach uh, the Bulbitis at the back, the Anubius to strategic places on the wood, and I'm not sure what we're going to do with the crinum, but we'll, we'll have a play around. For attaching to wood, I'm going to be using this super glue, so it's the green cap gorilla glue gel i've always found that to be really good for attaching things you want to attach uh, when you're attaching to wood attach the rhizome which is the thick part of the root rather than burying it for those ones this is the stage where i kind of have to move fast i want to get the plants attached and keep things damp so i might go and get a spray bottle just so i can keep things a little bit damp 
I'm going to put the crinum on this side. I tried it over here and didn't really like it. I think once the water gets in, these throngs will look good on this side of the, the tank. All kind of reaching out. It's probably worth talking about lighting as well. So none of these plants are particularly demanding light-wise. In fact, they, they wouldn't do well if it was a high-light aquarium. So at the moment, I've just got one little spotlight over there. I'm going to have shining down. I'm not going for a, like a black water look, but I want quite a dark tank, quite a, a low light look. Uh, I'm going to put in some leaf litter as well at some point. I think that'll, I think that'll look good. But if it doesn't, we'll change it afterwards. But the plants should do okay in this kind of environment. So I've got a couple more Anubias. I think I've got three of the Congo Anubias, which I think is these ones. And then we've got three of the heterophilia. Heterophilia. Heterophilia? I don't know how you say it. The good thing about this wood is this wood. This wood is there are some crevices which are kind of ideal for placing things like Anubius. Uh, and I've, I usually do this. And if you don't want to use glue, this is a great way to do it. You just have to be careful not to break anything. But if you can kind of wedge a rhizome, I want to get it down that bit there. So the whole thing about this is just trial and error. This is my whole approach. I should probably try and plan these things out again. Maybe we'll talk about that in the live stream. See, this one's being awkward because its leaves are very bent downwards. So if I put it down too low, the leaves are going to go into the sand and I don't want that. So this one's going to have to go up a bit higher. So I might swap that with another one. To me, this is what aquascaping is all about. Just continually messing around until you find something you like. I can't get this plant to sit how I want it. I want it in this area, but I don't want it there. I don't want it in that rotation, but it won't sit any other way. So I might have to glue this one. I want it kind of like this. So I might have to glue that one in place and then I can swap it with this one. So last but not least, we've got some Bulbitis. So much like the Anubias, you don't plant this in the substrate. It's got the rhizome, which you need to attach to something or wedge somewhere. So it's still got some rock wool on it. We're going to do a liberal wedging somewhere in the aquarium. So this is, and I do want it to be more of a background plant. So I am going to try and find places for it more around the background, so whether it's attaching it to rocks or crevices in the wood. There we go, I'm fairly happy with that. It's not massively heavily planted, but there's some greenery to accent the hardscape. Now I've moved the tank into position, you can see the single light just up there and the way that it's just casting quite... it's just casting quite a, a dull um, light over there, creating some shadows in the back and it. I do quite like that. I'm worried there's not an, any light getting back there at all, so we might need to tweak this a little bit, but it's something different and I want something different. This is going to be a different tank for me. I do like the way that looks. Let's get it filled. Right, we're back. It's been filling up overnight. I added some leaves. I added some filters, not really happy with the filter situation, we've got a hang on back and we've got a little power heady thing over there, but the, the Indian almond leaves, so you know, very loose biotype, mostly just there to help kickstart the tannins, I'll see if I can find something a bit more appropriate for later, but it's happening, you can see the water has got that kind of brownie look, and that's just what I'm going for, most people will be like, oh no, how do we get rid of the tannins, but I, I want that. So, we're ready for fish now, I think. Um, one more thing I added was another light because the single light there, although it gave a cool effect, you really, there was no light getting to this side. So I've added another really low powered light at the top, which has still kept it kind of dark. I mean, in comparison to the other tanks, it's still quite dark. But again, that's what we're going for. So now, add fish. So for fish, we're starting with the centerpiece. This is what it's all about. These are the Congo Tetras. And what fantastic examples of Congo tetras they are. I mean, look at the finage, the colours on some of these. These are going to go absolutely fantastic in there. So we'll get these out of this holding tank. 
they've been doing really well since they've been in there. Really aggressive eaters, really, really active fish. I can't believe the difference in keeping them in such larger numbers has made over the smaller numbers I've kept in the past. They're just so much more active and interactive with each other. And the colours come out so much better as well. So we've got the Congo Tetras. We've got our little inspector come to help out. Yeah, what are you doing? We've got the Alestes Tetras as well. They are going to be a very nice, really interesting, not so common fish, but really nice markings, good size as well. They'll go in as a complimentary Tetra. They'll do really well in that tank as well. We've got the African Butterfly Fish. We've got a couple of these. Again, a really kind of interesting oddball type fish. That's not two fish, that's just one fish at the top with its reflection. I think these look great. We've got the Del Hezai, Del Hezi Ornate Biter. He'll go in there as well. So let's get all these fish in here and we'll roll the montage. So all the fish are going in. Interestingly, the Congos and the Alestes are schooling together for the best part of the last hour that I've been watching them. Uh, the Bichers disappeared. I have no idea where that's going. The butterfly, butterfly fish are hanging out up the top, as they do. But I'm really quite happy with this. I think it looks great. Obviously, it's not finished yet. I do want to add more to this. So if you've got any suggestions, join us on a Friday night, 9pm UK time. We'll be discussing this and more. Uh, random topics no doubt but I did want to get a shout in Denny Puffer for this tank as well I don't know if that will work anymore but it's a fish that I'm definitely interested in keeping at some point but I don't know whether this will always stay as a Congo biotype but this is my attempt at it so like I say join me discuss it tell us what I've done right what I've done wrong what you like about it what you don't like about it leave me comments down below let me know what you think but I like it and I guess that's all that matters so as always, click that subscribe button. Thanks very much for joining me and watching this. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.